Hey there everyone, Brady here in the bowels of the Royal Society. I have two words for you today. Brady Puss Giganteus. Yeah? Come on Keith, get in here, help us out. <laughs> <laughs> so Keith is going to show us this big book here. So this is uh, Dalton and Panda, so these are the authors, Skelete, so skeletons. This is a big book of skeletons of fossilised animals. Keith, you had me at Big Book of Skeletons. Yeah, I, yeah it, it's, it's great stuff, isn't it? I would imagine if I was putting together a Big Book of Skeletons, I'd have my best skeleton first, you know, the cream of the crop. I, I, I think you would. Uh, you, you want to impress the readers, so that, that's the way you'd go, right? OK. Yeah, OK, so let's have a look at what it is. Our first skeleton, number one, first cab off the rank, cream of the crop. It is the Bradypus giganteus. So viewers will have heard of, of the octopus and the platypus. So this is the, the, the bradypus, and the principle is the same. So it's uh, your yeah, octopus, you've got eight feet, eight legs. Uh, platypus is, is flat-footed. Uh, so bradypus is slow-footed. Ah, Let's have a look at it, because yeah? for those who don't know, brady does mean slow. There we go. I didn't like to say, but <laughs> here we go. So this is a giant land sloth. So think about the size of a family car or something like that. This is the size of a car. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're pretty big beasts. So you get them in, in South America. And it's, uh, it's just rather a fantastic thing. I Hang think. on a second. Let, mm. let James get in there and have a look. Show everyone the Brady feet. That is the contemporary Brady foot. But that's a proper one there. Let's have a, a quick flip through and just see oh, what are the beasts we have here. We tend to think of, of fossilised animals as, as dinosaurs these days because, of course, in the mid-Victorian period, dinosaurs were very big. But before that, lots of other creatures were found, so there was a fashion for marine reptiles. And in the 18th century, the fossilised mammals were very big. In this book, there you'll find bears, you'll find lions, horses, so these are early versions of extinct creatures. What a fantastic book. We actually have a second picture of the Brady Puss mm -hmm. here because you have to take this in from every possible angle. That's what it must look like as a Brady Puss is slowly charging at you. It's a great looking beast, isn't it? Oh, look, they've done a little picture for every bone. Mm. So it's no longer known as this Brady Puss Giganteus. What do, we know the, what do we know these as now? What did the name kind of change to? The, the general um, uh, group of animals is, is megatherium. Megatherium. Yeah. So you've got another trait for us. Can I grab it, Keith? Yes, do. Oh, by the way, Keith had this out waiting for me when I arrived today. Yeah. James, could you caption underneath just so we don't confuse the viewers? Separated at birth. But we're not here just to make fun of me. This is a really special book. This is a Darwin journal from his voyage on the Beagle. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why it's special. Have a look at the front here. To the Library of the Royal Society. So essentially to you, Keith. This I like to think so, yeah. This, this I like to think so. Pretty much personally addressed to you. Mm -hmm. Presented by the author. Of course, the author being Darwin. That's right, Charles Darwin. So that's his hand there. What do we have here, Keith? Why, why is this of interest here? So this is Darwin's description of one of his land travels across South America. So he's dropped off by Captain Fitzroy and off he goes geologizing. At Punta Alta, he describes uh, what he finds. And it says here they came across a skeleton. He says a tolerably perfect head of a megatherium, a bradypus. Exactly, yes. So here's Charles Darwin in South America on his most famous voyage and he's discovering fossils. And this helps him to think about uh, extinction because these huge things are no longer around. What happened to them? And therefore, eventually, it feeds into his ideas about evolution, which is the most important piece of work of the 19th century and just about any period you can think of in science. So you've heard it there straight from Keith that the Bradypus giganteus essentially key role in one of the most important scientific discoveries of all time basically you're saying. Uh, well, I wouldn't maybe no, pick no, it up no, no, quite no. that I much, think, about Brady, I, but you I know, think that's uh, a fair that's, summary. Yeah, I, I guess I think, you might think it was a fair summary. I think, yeah, yeah, I think <laughs> I think we'll stick with that for now. But but never, nevertheless, it is really interesting, isn't it, to see these giant skeletons and mm -hmm. then see someone like Darwin looking at them and thinking, 
goodness gracious, we don't have them anymore. What's going on? What happened? Joining the dots. Yes, exactly. Seems obvious to us now, but here we see it in action. Yeah. Flighty nymph is captured by Apollo. She falls in love with the sun, Helios, and her gaze follows the sun around the sky. So you can see how this fits in with a solar physicist. And you can see also there are sunflower seeds here that Lucy is holding because eventually the nymph was turned into a, a, a sunflower. Tell people what you think. Does, does it look like her? I think it's a terrific likeness. It's a strong sculpture. It's an interesting, direct work of art. Uh, and I really enjoy it. We've got a bit of a surprise for you now because you can judge for yourself if it's a good likeness because Dr. Green's over here. <laughs>